Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're going to take a look at what a machine learning model actually looks like. So we're going to use a visualizer tool called Neutron or Neutron. Hopefully, I'm saying that correctly. And we can actually look at the diagram of some of its logic and the connectors along with it. So we can look at some of our favorite, but then we're also going to look at a Chrome extension that we put together and how we can actually use that Onyx file in the browser through WASM and what that model actually looks like. All right, so the tool that we're gonna look at is Neutron or it could be Neutron. Um, hopefully I'm saying one of those correctly, but I came across this on GitHub and it is a uh, viewer for neural networks, deep learning and machine learning models. It has a list of support. So I've used Onyx a few times. Uh, I think ten the TensorFlow Lite is also really awesome has a few other ones, but it even lists TensorFlow JS, which I thought was really cool since we do a lot of things with AI and specifically in JavaScript. So here is kind of an example of what it looks like. Uh, the, they have multiple different installs, so you can do, we'll take a look at the Mac, but it also has a browser, which we're gonna look at. And then uh, different examples that you can just see through here. One of the benefits of actually visualizing this is the ability to actually see what is the logic that is happening here. You can click and dive into some of the uh, more details of like what are the attributes, the conv, and uh, even the connections, which we'll kind of go through. So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna view this in the browser to start, and then we'll show a local example. So if you click any one of these models, you can actually see what it is. And you're able to kind of zoom in, zoom out. Uh, and then when you click on the node, you can actually see the properties over here of what's happening. So this one is a, an Onyx uh, squeeze nut file. They also have an example of a light file, which if you zoom out, you can see the logic from the top and how it's going all the way down into the bottom here as uh, part of its decision tree. So you can see the 2Ds, its weights and bias, and even the logic up here of how it's uh, shaping, splitting, and then doing uh, the packing. So what I meant by the, the connectors is you can actually hover over the lines and it'll show you what the inputs are, what kind of uh, type it is, and then the different outputs that it's going to. As you're hovering over them, you can kind of see it light up over here in red uh, when it's over those particular inputs. So the other one we'll look at is YOLO. And this one is more of, uh, like you'll see the convolution. I also like that it had the weights and biases right at the beginning. So you can kind of see the inputs, the floats, uh, and the weights as the, um, the uh, iterables, or not iterables here. So again, this one's pretty straight, which I found really interesting. But the cool thing about this, again, is it's a great way to learn, but you can also see what the model is doing, what it's looking like, and uh, in, in a visual way. The other cool thing I saw was this t light file that's actually in the code for Neutron specifically. So Neutron is uh, running, it's a JavaScript uh, application, runs in Electron, which is why I can also run on the browser. Right here, we're looking at like how it's pulling in the uh, T -light or TF Lite file, so the TensorFlow Lite file how it's going through the factory of making this information, even the binary reader for the buffer, and then using uh, the schema to define what is, uh, what's actually happening here. So I, I just wanted to look at the guts of this a little. Real quick, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. We also have a link to our newsletter, which gives different kinds of code and updates. And we even have a link if you want to expand on this course specifically, where we talk about hugging face models and being used in a Chrome extension. So go ahead and smash that like and subscribe. 
All right, so now we'll take a look at the uh, application itself. So if we go ahead, we're going to pull in our model Onyx. What I wanted to show you though, was that what we're actually pulling this from is a Chrome extension that we put together in a Hugging Face course specifically for Chrome extensions. If you're interested, the link is below. But you can see that you have this public folder, which is the Chrome extension itself. You have a WASM folder, you have models, and you have this NLP Town BERT, uh, BERT sentiment. And so you can see this Onyx file. What's interesting about this is this didn't start off as an Onyx file. It started off as a TensorFlow file. And you can actually use their conversion to take one model and convert it into Onyx which then allows you to use uh, WASM, which is web accessibility, or not web accessibility, sorry, WebAssembly, to, uh, to get the, the file to load in the browser. Again, this is loading in the browser. It's not using uh, an API. So what we'll do is we're going to take a look at this model and go ahead and pull it in. I'm going to pause here for a second while it's loading. All right, and so now that we have this loaded, we can see the file path of where our Onyx file is. We can zoom in, we can zoom out. It's a little slower, uh, at least on my machine, running the Onyx, uh, sorry, running Electron. But then you can actually click, same as you would in the, um, the web version, and get the property information. So again, now we can look at what the logic is happening in this model and how it's put together. The other thing I thought was pretty crazy with this one is you have an attention mask that basically has connectors for the entire uh, applic or entire model, which is pretty massive. So you can see how big this NLP uh, logic is. And you can dive into each section as it goes down. The other test that I thought would be fun to do is what if we don't know everything about these models and we want to understand a particular piece of it? What we can do is we can actually take a screenshot of the, the section of the model or even the properties and have ChatGPT Vision explain it to us. So what I did was I took the YOLO model just to see if this would actually work. And I put it into chat GPT vision and just asked it to explain it. It was able, able to pick up the fact that it was a convolutional neural net and then started talking about some of the inputs and what each layer was, as well as defining the parameters like the weights and bias and what the features were. It even went as far as to talk about the uh, activation function, which is something I, I didn't know a ton about. So I thought this was cool because you could dive in to it even further. It also gives more of an explanation, uh, talks about how it's only the first few layers, so it can't define the entire thing. I also ran the BERT example, and uh, because it had some things like reduce mean, just to see what would come back. So it recognizes the fact that it's an Onyx model. I did actually tell it that, but talks about the uh, file format a little bit more, talks specifically about the inputs and the token IDs, how this information is getting collected all the way down into like the layer normalization. So I thought this was a really cool tool. I wanted to share it with everyone because I feel like it's a great way to visually understand how a model is working, but then also you can uh, leverage ChatGPT. All right, everyone, thanks for joining us. What we learned today was how to actually visualize a data model, go through some different variations of it, actually look at the Onyx file that we use in a Chrome extension that is getting pulled in through WASM. And we even use ChatGPT Vision to actually explain that graph to us so we have a better understanding of what's actually happening in the execution of the model itself. Thanks for tuning in and happy nerding.